So, we now know how to calculate mass transfer flux in steep fan flow models, uh, Coeur flow model as well as in Reynolds flow model and uh, we are ready to solve practical problems. So, what I am going to do now is to begin with the steep fan flow model in this lecture. Steep fan flow model essentially deals with uh, uh, diffusion problems because the in the considered phase the velocity is 0. So, we shall look at uh, uh, simple inert mass, mass diffusion, uh, inert counter diffusion. We will take a problem a very simplified problem of catalysis. Uh, we will look at inert mass diffusion with heat transfer and then finally, consider actually uh, chemical reaction in which the burning of liquid fuel droplet in stagnant surroundings. So, quite a variety of problems uh, to uh, help you with the with the understanding of this of the variety of applications to which Stefan flow model can be put. So, here is a problem first problem a 10 liter vessel contains carbon dioxide at 25 degree C and 5 bar as I have shown here 10 liter vessel 25 degrees C and 5, degree, 5 bar. The vessel is fitted with a 20 millimeter cork, 20 millimeter thick cork, her, whose surface area is 300 millimeter square. So, the surface area here is 300 millimeter square. The height of the cork is 20 millimeters. Determine the initial rate of mass loss of CO2 through the cork. Remember cork, uh, because this is at high pressure, uh, CO2 would uh, diffuse out of the cork. So, what is the initial rate of mass loss of CO2? When the mass loss takes place, of course, the, the pressure in the, in the vessel will reduce. Uh, so, we want to find out what the reduction in vessel pressure will be after let us say 6 months, if this was left unused for 6 months. You have been given a property data that this diffusivity of CO2 cork is as 1.1 into 10 raise to minus 10 meter square per second, very, very small value. And there is another quantity called solubility. See, when, when CO2 is in contact with cork surface, then uh, the concentration uh, of CO2 at this surface, the inner surface, assumes a certain value not the same as 1, but a certain value and uh, uh, that value is usually quoted in terms of solubility as 0 0.04015 kilo moles per meter cube bar. We shall use this value of S to determine what the inside mass fraction of CO2 is. The outside mass fraction of course, is 0. So, let us begin our solution. So, here uh, CO2 diffuses through stationary cork and hence there is no mass transfer flux of cork and using Stefan flow model therefore, we will have n CO2 at any distance y as minus rho m diffusivity 1 minus omega CO2 d omega CO2 by dy equal to constant. In other words, n CO2 the mass, uh, mass flux of CO2 will remain constant and since A is constant, even the mass transfer rate would remain constant throughout the, throughout the surface. So, how do we solve this problem further? Uh, if we integrate this equation from y equal to 0, where omega C O 2 i to y equal to b omega C O 2 o, which is 0, uh, then we have n C O 2 equal to minus rho m d b divided by b l n 1 minus omega C O 2 i and we will shortly discover that omega C O 2 i is in fact very, very small and therefore, l n 1 minus omega C O 2 i can be taken as a minus omega C O 2 i and that is what I have done here approximately equal to rho m omega C O 2 d by b i and what is omega C O 2 i that is rho density of uh, omega C O 2 divided by density of the mixture mixture of cork and, and CO2 and therefore, this will be rho CO2 i d by b. 
Now, this is where we use uh, solubility uh, as density of, uh, of carbon dioxide at the inside surface is equal to solubility. Remember, solubility is given as uh, solubility is given as uh, S equal to uh, 0 0.04015 kilo moles per meter cube bar. And therefore, on the next slide, I, I calculate rho CO2, which is kilograms per uh, meter cube, would be given as S uh, kilo moles per meter cube bar multiplied by P, which is in bars, multiplied by molecular weight of CO2 which is kilograms per kilo mole. Uh, so, uh, this will give me straight away uh, of course, value of P must be used in bars S is solubility given here and this is the molecular weight of CO 2 which is 44. So, if we use this then you get density of, uh, of CO 2 at the inside surface will be 8.83 kilograms per meter cube. So, what will be the mass fraction? The it will be uh, the rho quark is 1.93 into 10 raise to 5. So, essentially it will be 8.83 divided by uh, a very large quantity plus 8.83. So, you get essentially omega C O 2 i equal to omega C O 2 i will be 8.83 divided by 8.83 plus 1.93 into 10 raise to 5. So, that gives you equal to 4.575 into 10 raise to minus 5. And therefore, the initial rate of loss of CO2 m dot will be the area of the cork multiplied by n CO2. The area of the cork is 300 millimeter square and therefore, this will be 300 into 10 raise to minus 6 meter square. 8.83 is the density, 1.1 into 10 raise to minus 10 is the diffusivity uh, divided by the height d b. Uh, this is diffusivity is 1.1 into 10 raise to minus 6 and b uh, is 20 millimeters. So, that is 0 0.02 and this gives you the answer. The initial rate of mass flow will be 1.457 into 10 raise to minus 11 kilograms per second, uh, which is the answer of the part A. Now, the instantaneous mass loss can be given by, you can see here that the mass loss m dot will be volume of the vessel, uh, vessel volume multiplied by rate of change of uh, of density of d t. This is the density into volume is mass, but the volume remains constant. So, that you get that and rho C O 2 from ideal gas law would be simply minus V m C O 2 divided by R u t P C O 2 by d t that is replacing rho C O 2 in terms of m C O 2 P C O 2 R u t uh, d t and that would equal uh, as we said in the in the previous slide. A into D by B into omega 2 R S into M C O 2 uh, P C O 2 I, which is the density uh, uh, density of cork, uh, I mean density of C O 2 on the inside surface is, uh, is, is, is what we want rho C O 2 I, which is going to now vary with time and therefore, that would also equal S into m c o 2 into p c o 2. So, this is what you get. So, rearranging this dividing by p o c o 2 here you get 1 over p c o 2 d p c o 2 by d t equal to minus a d uh, s the solubility r u into t divided by b into volume or ln p c o 2 by p c o 2 at time t equal to 0 would be minus a d s r u t divided by b 
p into time in seconds. So, R u as you know the universal gas constant is 8314. The time in seconds for 6 months would be 6 into 30 into 24 hours into 3600. The volume itself being 10 liters is 10 into 10 to minus 3 and uh, the initial pressure is 5 bar, initial pressure is 5 bar and therefore, uh, after 6 months the pressure would be uh, if we calculate substitute all these values here you will see 5 into uh, ln of this is this. So, therefore, P C O 2 by P C O 2 at t equal to 0 will be exponential of all this quantity is equal to minus 0.26337 equal to 3.84 bar. So, that would be the pressure inside the inside the vessel after 6 months and therefore, there will be total loss and pressure would be 5 which was initial minus 3.1.16 bar uh, and which is the answer view. So, engineers and maintenance engineers are often interested in knowing uh, this, this sort of values. So, that uh, so, that they know that uh, they would order only the amount that is required uh, for their use and not leave vessels uh, un, uh, unguarded, uh, uh, unused uh, and lose CO2 thereby. Let us take another problem. Here we consider two large tanks of CO2 which can each contain CO2 plus N2. This is a tank 1 and this is tank 2 both of them contain CO 2 and N 2 at 1 bar and 25 degree centigrade. So, the total pressure and total temperature of both the tanks is identical, but they are very large. The tanks are very, very large. The tanks are connected by a 1 meter long tube, a 1 meter long tube of 5 centimeter diameter. Although the total pressure in tank 1 is 1 bar, uh, the partial pressure of CO 2 is simply uh, is a low 50 millimeters of a mercury, whereas the partial pressure of CO 2 in tank 2 is 100 millimeters of mercury. Now, as a result what would happen is although the total pressures are equal, CO 2 would diffuse to tank 1 from tank 2. Uh, and uh, since mass must be conserved, the nitrogen uh, here whose, pre whose partial pressure will now be bigger than, uh, than in tank 2, the nitrogen would diffuse in the opposite direction. So, we have been asked to calculate the mass transfer rate of CO2 under steady state. So, here CO2 will diffuse from tank 2 to tank 1. Now, P CO2 of 100 millimeters of Hg because 760 millimeters of Hg equals 1 bar, P C O 2 2 in bars would be 100 by 760 is equal to 0 0.1316 bar and in tank 1 it would be 50 by 760 which is uh, 0.06579 bar and N 2 will diffuse in the opposite direction. So, that N C O 2 plus N N 2 will be 0 and as you will recall from our uh, diffusion model N C O 2 is N total rho C O 2 minus d d rho C O 2 by d x uh, and uh, since this quantity is 0 we get N C O 2 would be simply minus d into d rho C O 2 by d x equal to constant. So, now this equation must be integrated of course, uh, to obtain our formula. So, rho C O 2 is P C O 2 divided by R C O 2 divided by T from ideal gas law and R C O 2 would be uh, R C O 2 will be 8314 divided by 44 and that is equal to 188.95. This is R u divided by molecular weight of C O 2. So, you get R C O 2 equal to 188.95 joules per kilograms per Kelvin and therefore, N C O 2 is equal to uh, minus D R C O 2 T into D P C O 2 by D X equal to constant. Now, from our previous lecture you will know you can check out that 
diffusivity of CO2 in nitrogen is 11 into 10 to minus 6 298 divided by 300 into 1.5 and since we have uh, our pressure is in uh, is in bar uh, whereas uh, 1.01 to uh, 1 atmosphere is equal to 1.0125 bar uh, and our temperature is 25 degree centigrade so it's 298 divided by 300 so you get 11.034 into 10 to the minus 6 meter square per second so integration of this equation from x equal to 0 to x equal to L gives n C O 2 equal to minus d uh, diffusivity R C O 2 T L which is temperature into P C O 2 2 minus P C O 2 1 uh, and diffusivity being equal to uh, 11.034 uh, 10 to the minus 6 188.95 is R C O 2 temperature is 298 K and L the length of the tube is 1 meter, P C O 2 2 is 0.1325, P C O 2 1 is that uh, into 10 raise to 5 newtons per meter square and as a result you will get N C O 2 equal to minus all these quantities. The negative side in indicates that the N C O 2 is flowing in the negative x direction that is from tank 2 to tank 1 and therefore, the mass flow rate m dot c o 2 will be n c o 2 multiplied by uh, pi by 4 into diameter of the pipe 0 0.05 uh, which is 5 centimeters 0 0.05 uh, squared is equal to minus 2.55 into 10 raise to minus kg per second. So, this is the answer to our problem of the rate of diffusion of c o 2 in the in this pipe in this problem from tank 2 to tank 1. We now look at a third problem. You know that uh, uh, in exhaust gas of a let us say of an IC engine may contain nitrous uh, NO nitric oxide and you are told that uh, it is the, the exhaust gas is at 500 degree centigrade uh, 1 bar pressure and uh, it contains the mole fraction of NO in that stream is 0 0.002 and the mixture molecular weight is 30. Now, in order to extract NO out of this, uh, you pass it over a catalyst surface. So, you have a basically you have a let us say a catalyst surface and this is the uh, hot gas, hot uh, gas which contains NO, x NO uh, infinity equal to uh, 0 0.002. The temperature here is 500 degree centigrade or T is equal to 773 Kelvin uh, and uh, the mixture molecular weight in the infinity state is uh, 30. Now, what I am going to do is although the, the gases are moving I am going to make a few assumptions in order to render the problem tractable in a very simple way. So, it is assumed that chemical reactions involving NO are very, very low at 500 degree centigrade. In other words, over the entire flow of this surf uh, of uh, the gas over this surface, NO does not react with any other substance, uh, any other species in the, in the gas and therefore, N O essentially remains constant. The concentration of N O essentially remains constant. Uh, it is neither destroyed nor generated in this uh, over this length of the pipe uh, uh, of the surface. So, we can take N O equal to absolutely constant uh, at 0 0.002 which is the volume uh, mass fraction of the uh, of N O as given. Further, at the catalyst surface NO is absorbed with kinetic rate N w. Now, of course, absorb means it is in this direction uh, and you are told that N NO will be k times uh, rho m into omega NO w, where k is the kinetic rate constant uh, and uh, 
its value has been given as 0 0.075 meters per second. Now, it is further assumed that NO diffuses to the catalyst surface over a stagnant layer of 1 millimeter. What it means is that uh, near the catalyst surface, the velocity is so low as you can see it will, it will be like that. So, the velocity is so low that we can in fact take this as a very stagnant layer in the extreme case stagnant layer of 1 millimeter thickness. All right, So, uh, that is what we will do and you have been told that take in this in this uh, very small layer remember there will be some effects of turbulence and therefore, but although very very small we are told that take d effective equal to 3 times d the laminar diffusivity and the laminar diffusivity itself is given as 10 raise to minus 4 meter square per second. So, determine the steady state absorption rate uh, of N O and omega N O W. So, here the total N total will be N N O plus N others, but we have been told that in this layer it is a stagnant layer. So, N others is 0 because N O is the only one that is diffusing whereas, the other species simply do not diffuse and let y equal to 0 define the catalyst surface, then diffusion rate will equal the kinetic rate and what will be the diffusion rate? N n o in equal to N n o omega n o which will be the convective rate and this will be the diffusion rate out. So, N n o is uh, as, as shown here, this is the N n o equal to N n o into omega n o with minus rho m diffusivity omega n o by d y and that will be equal to the opposite minus k rho m omega n o because uh, absorption is taking place in this way whereas, the our formula uh, is for positive n n o and this is the expression. So, that is what I have written here n n o is equal to n n o omega n o minus rho m d omega n o by d y equal to minus k rho m omega n o at w. So, if I rearrange the equation then n n o will be minus rho m d 1 over omega n o d omega n o by d y equal to minus k rho m omega n o w. If I integrate this equation from y equal to 0 to L the, the height of the stagnant layer which is 1 millimeter, then I will get n n o equal to rho m d divided by L, L n of 1 minus omega n o infinity divided by 1 minus omega n o w which can be written as g star L n 1 plus omega n o infinity minus omega n o w over omega n o w minus 1 and g star is nothing but rho m d by L as you know uh, for a Stefan flow model and that would equal minus k rho m n o w. Now, you know already omega n o infinity because remember omega n o infinity will be x n o infinity into m n o divided by m mix uh, the molecular weight and that is given as 0 0.002 m n o the molecular weight of n o will be 14 plus 1630 and you are already given molecular weight of mixture is also 30. So, this gets cancelled and in, in other words the mass fraction is same as the mole fraction. So, 0 0.002 and omega n o at w uh, will be if we equate this and this then by iteration uh, you can determine uh, 1.44 into 10 to minus 3 which is in fact very very small and therefore, 1 plus b will actually be equal to b itself in which case no iterations are required. Hence, the value of rho m p r mix by t will be 0.466 uh, kg per meter cube.
Remember, R mix will be 8314 divided by M mix, which is 30. Uh, in the infinity state, uh, omega infinity is 0 0.002, and in the wall state, it is 1.144 into 10 to minus 3. So, first of all, one evaluates the mean mass fraction, uh, and that is equal to 0 0.466, and therefore, NNO is equal to minus 0 0.466 into 0 0.075, which is the K value already given to you, uh, into uh, 1.144 which is the omega n o w into 10 raise to minus 3. Remember, this is rho m is uh, from the property data you have been given. Uh, you take the temperature as uh, 500 degree centigrade, uh, p is 1 bar. So, you can evaluate the density uh, as p divided by r mix t and uh, 466 into 0.075 into 1.144 into 10 to the minus 3 would give you 4 into 10 to the minus 5 kilograms per meter square seconds. So, that is the first part of the problem. So, in other words, if you want to remove uh, this will tell you what is the amount of catalyst surface you will require to obtain given amount of removal of, of NO uh, from that surface. The value of B itself would be because you know now the omega n o w, you know omega n o infinity and that is the value of B would evaluate to minus 5.608 to 10 to minus 4 and it is very small as well as notice that it is negative because there is an absorption going on. Uh, also, if the gas velocity now is accounted, then G star must be appropriately augmented uh, from H cop uh, from the heat transfer situation corresponding heat transfer situation and in which case you will need to evaluate omega n o w freshly and carry out the calculation. But as of now in assuming stagnancy you get the, the mass transfer flux is known uh, which is the answer A uh, and uh, answer B omega n o w was uh, is 1.144 into 10 to the minus 3. Now, we look at evaporation problem. A 50 micrometer liquid n hexane droplet whose density is 659 kg per meter cube, its latent heat uh, uh, is uh, 335 kilojoules per kilogram, its boiling point is 69 degree centigrade or 342 K. It evaporates in a stationary pure nitrogen environment at one atmosphere and 850 Kelvin. So, calculate the evaporation time using T w equal to D B P and using T w equal to T L and equilibrium evaporation assumption. In each case take K m equal to 0 0.0478, C P m equal to 2.434 kilojoules per kg Kelvin and m mix equal to 57. So, in the part A of the problem, since the droplet is at, uh, at boiling point, B m h uh, would simply evaluate to T infinity minus T B P H F G uh, into C P m and uh, it will be 2.434 into 800 minus 342 divided by 335 kilojoules per kg per kg and therefore, that would be equal to 3.69. So, notice that when the fuel evaporates in a nitrogen environment, it is prevented from burning and therefore, uh, uh, 3.69 very, very, very high uh, driving force compared to the problems we have seen so far. And therefore, evaporation rate would be rho L into d w i square 8 times uh, k m by c p m into L n 1 plus B m h equal to 6.7 milliseconds. Remember gamma h is k m by C p m and that would be 19.39 10 to the minus 6. So, it takes 6.7 milliseconds when the droplet is initially at its boiling point. Now, suppose we do not we inject it at some other temperature uh, T l in which case we will have to find out what is the value of T w by from equilibrium evaporation assumption that is by iteration. So, 
T w equal to T l is, is not known and hence we must adopt iterative solution. Now, since inside the droplet there is no temperature variation Q l will be equal to 0 and therefore, our formula would be m dot w equal to 4 pi r w gamma h l n 1 plus C p m t infinity minus T w divided by h f g and that would also equal B m which is uh, uh, the mass transfer formula from B m 4 pi r w gamma m uh, gamma m as you know is rho m multiplied by diffusivity gamma h is k m divided by specific heat uh, 1 plus omega v infinity minus omega v w omega v w minus 1 and uh, where from lecture 32 t m uh, if we we must uh, assume a t w and evaluate t m. So, uh, presently I am taking it as let us say phi 96 k and diffusivity of Therefore, I will calculate as uh, from our previous uh, lecture where diffusivity of ethane in nitrogen is also given as 8 into 10 raise to minus 6 T divided by uh, T naught phi 96 by 300 into 1.5 the pressures are equal uh, to 1 bar. So, that is that is uh, 1 atmosphere and therefore, nothing to correct for pressure and therefore, uh, diffusivity would be taken as 22.4 into 10 raise to minus 6. So, if we now equate uh, these two equations, then I get gamma h ln 1 plus b h equal to gamma m ln 1 plus b m and uh, that would essentially mean that this quantity is equal to 1 plus C p m t infinity by T w divided by h f g raised to Lewis number which is gamma m by gamma h, which as you can see uh, that would be the Lewis number and uh, omega v w would be from Clausius Clapeyron equation would be uh, m v by m mix which is m v being the vapor minus h f g m v r u into 1 over t w minus t b p. So, what one does is you assume a value of t w and hence since you know t b p you know h f g you know the molecular weight of vapor you, you know what is m mix. So, therefore, from T b p you evaluate uh, omega v w substitute that value here and uh, calculate the left hand side as well as the right hand side and see if the two are in agreement. Of course, in each case you must calculate uh, gamma m and gamma h for each temperature because the mean temperature would change for each choice of T w. Uh, and T infinity is 850 all, uh, as you know already. So, uh, so, one needs to iterate on these two formula uh, on these two equations. In our case M v is uh, uh, 86 for n x n uh, rho m is uh, 1.165 kilograms per meter cube Lewis number is uh, gamma h by gamma m is 0.743. So, to carry out iterations we assume T w and evaluate omega v w and properties until the first relation on the left hand side on the previous slide is satisfied within tolerance. So, after iterations the answer is uh, convergence is obtained when uh, uh, T w is 322.1 Kelvin or 49.1 degree centigrade. This is 49.1 degree centigrade for which uh, omega v w is 0.7794 and the properties are uh, mean properties turn out to be 2009.5 joules per kg per Kelvin that is a specific heat. Conductivity would be 0 0.045, Lewis number turns out to be 0 0.888 and the mixture a molecular weight would turn out to be 43.5 and B H would be 3.167 whereas B M would be 3.53 because omega B infinity is 0. So, do you do see that the effect of Lewis number would be to have B M and B H are different. So, I can use any of the formulae uh, of the previous slide I can use it this formula or I can use this formula only thing is I have to use either omega h and b h or omega m and b m 
I am evaluating here from omega h therefore, k m by C p m and for these conditions of T w which is 49.1 degree centigrade, uh, I evaluate uh, k m by C p m equal to 22.4 10 to minus 6 and 1 plus 3.167 which is but Now, you get the answer as 6.44 milliseconds, 6.44 millisecond whereas, by injecting at T b p uh, you had 6.44 7 uh, milliseconds. Now, you have 6.4 milliseconds. Uh, so, that our assumption of T w in equal T b in part a is reasonable, although the droplet temperature is now nearly 20 degree centigrade uh, less than the boiling point. Now, this is as far as evaporation goes, but in actual engines, uh, this difference of uh, 0.3 milliseconds can be significant because the total burning time itself is in milliseconds and therefore 0.3 milliseconds for evaporation is a significant quantity uh, for engine applications. But here uh, in order to study evaporation of a volatile fuel, what we have done is we have taken the environment at 850 K to comprise nitrogen. So, now let us take the same liquid droplet of n hexane uh, of 50 mil micron diameter and allow it to burn. Uh, again the properties are given and it is burning in 1 atmospheric pressure and 300 K. We will assume that the droplet is already at its boiling point. So, T w is equal to T b p and the con mean conductivity uh, and C p m of the considered phase are given the heat of combustion of n hexane is 45.1 mega joules per kilogram and therefore, we want to calculate the initial burning rate uh, and the burning time. Now, for any hydrocarbon reaction C m uh, any hydrocarbon reaction C m h n into m plus n by 4 into O 2 plus 3.76 N 2 uh, gives the products. And therefore, our, uh, our stoichiometric ratio uh, R S T is, uh, is equal to uh, M plus N by 4 into molecular weight of O 2 divided by molecular weight of uh, C m h n. So, in our present case m is equal to 6, n is also equal to 6, uh, n, n is equal to 14 beg your pardon uh, divided by um, this is 14 divided by 4 into 32 divided by molecular weight of this is 86 and that is what I have done and that would give you 3.535. So, if you look at uh, this, then over the B itself would be C p m into T infinity minus T boiling point because T w is which equal to T boiling point omega O 2 infinity R s divided by R s T del H c divided by uh, latent heat. This formula stems from the fact that H m can in defining H m I can say C p m into T minus T ref plus omega O 2 by R s T del H c. Yeah, that means, I have associated the heat of combustion with oxygen uh, rather than with fuel and therefore, I must divide this by R s T uh, and that would give you the formula that C p m T infinity minus T b p omega O 2 infinity by R s T del H c divided by H f g and uh, substituting for C p m 2.839 in kilojoules per kg 300 minus 342. So, remember the sensible part is negative, but the heat of combustion part is positive 0.232 divided by 3.535 into 45.1 into 10 to 3 divided by the heat uh, latent heat that gives you 8.48, 8.48. So, we get even a larger value in a burning problem compared to the evaporation problem.
which was 3.16 or so, here we get it as 8.48 and therefore, we expect the burning rate to be high uh, and uh, the burning time to be small. So, you can see now here I can evaluate burning rate initial burning rate is 4.4 4 into pi into gamma h which is km by C p m into R w i which is the initial radius uh, 50 by 2 into 10 to minus 6 ln 1 plus 8.48 giving 4.12 into 10 to minus 8 kg per second. That would be the initial uh, burning rate and the burning time would be rho L d w i square 8 into gamma m uh, gamma h into l n 1 plus b h. So, substituting for these values you now see this is just 1.57 milliseconds. So, same droplet evaporating now it is burning and the time has reduced quite considerably to 1.57 seconds. So, what we have learned from these sets of problems is that in general in air water evaporation problems uh, uh, the B is very, very small, but when fuels evaporate B can be substantially even bigger than 1 of the order of 2 or 3 or something of that kind. When the drop, when the fuel burns, uh, it would be of the order of 8 to 10 or even little greater than 10 in variety of different liquid fuels. So, but all this in stagnant surroundings, all this is done in stagnant surroundings. Uh, our interest in convective mass transfer and that we will take up uh, as you go along. But uh, you will recall that uh, even uh, convective environment can be handled by, uh, by treating it as a diffusion problem provided we uh, multiply the multiply the effective G star uh, of a Stefan problem uh, by the Sherwood number. That that that's the kind of something we had done in, in our lecture on uh, on, on Stefan flow model at, at an earlier time, where I showed you how uh, evaporation of a liquid droplet in a moving surroundings uh, can be handled. 